It's time for the 2024.2 Home Assistant release. Let's just jump right into it. This update's jam-packed with all kinds of new stuff, from voice to drag and drop to matter to everything else. Let's just get in here and get through quickly, and I'll show you all the highlights. So right now, uh, in automations, they've added the ability to do drag and drop. In the past, you had to explicitly go in there and enable that. Uh, now it's on all the time by default. So if we look at this here, you can see that the drag, um, what is it, button thing here is available all the time. So you can just take and drag it wherever you want to. That's neat. But what's even uh, more interesting is that you can take and drag these from outside of one element into another element or vice versa. So you can go from here and you can go down here. So dragging and dropping allows you to reorder your automation stuff without having to do anything but just take and drag and drop. So that's a really nice feature that's been added now to the automations. So next up, we have the ability to export data from our history dashboard. So if we take an, a, a device like this or an entity, which is my truck voltage, uh, running on a little ESP32, it reports into Home Assistant every so often. If you click on the show more button right here, you'll see that you have the ability up here to download this data. And it creates a particular CSV file for you. Uh, if we go over here and get rid of all these windows, You'll see here that I have data uh, from that sensor in my in a CSV format. If you use Excel, you can use that. You can use OpenOffice, whatever your favorite tool is for that. But then I can take and look at the states. For example, I want to do some graphing or whatever. I can just insert a chart and I can show that chart here and do whatever other stuff I want to do with it. So then basically your data is your own. It not only lives in Home Assistant, but you can export it into other files, store it somewhere, do whatever you want to it, massage it, etc. So that is a nice feature now available uh, in Home Assistant for those entities where you can export that history from your dashboard. All right, let me talk about the third thing, which is improved error responses from your assist pipeline. So if I go over here and I now do something with assist and I want to show you um, or I type something wrong, say something wrong, it's going to give me better responses. So let's say turn on faucet. Well, now instead of saying, I don't understand you, which is what it used to do, now it says, I am not of, aware of any device called faucet. In addition to that, it will also give you some uh, feedback if you're trying to specify areas that don't exist. So turn on lights in basement. Uh, he, our home assistant's not aware of any area called basement. So those are some improved errors that you're going to get back from that. Uh, you can do that for unknown names, areas, device classes, or domains. So these are things that are going to help you understand why your assist is not working rather than the old generic thing saying, Hey, I don't understand what you're talking about. So that is a nice new thing for that. Um, What's really cool now also in the assist world, the voice assist world is doing something with uh, the sentences that you can create. So I, I've done some of this already. This is automation that shows a custom sentence. So you can basically go in here and you can add a sentence. Uh, I'll show you real quick, add a trigger, other triggers, come down here to sentence. You can say a sentence. And you can add something here to say hello world or whatever the sentence is going to be here. I wouldn't put two of these together, obviously, but just to show you how it's added. Uh, where is that? Delete that one. Uh, I could say hello world in this one and then save it. So if I then went over here and I did something like said hello world. Well, before I do that, let me show you the rest of this. Not, not only can you... Uh, create these through the UI now, but you can also get the responses back through the UI and you can also template them. So in this case, uh, if you say hello world, or you say, what is the temperature in the media room? It's going to respond with this template. So the temp in the media room is blank or, or this state of this temperature sensor and the humidity is uh, the, the state of the humidity sensor. So then if I go over here to the dashboard, and you do this through your wake words or whatever else. I'm just doing it through text so you can see it. Hello world should respond back with temperature for this room. Yep, the temperature is uh, 72, humidity is 49.2% or 52%. 
I also can say what is the temp. What did I call that? What is the temperature in the media room? And we're going to get the same response. And you can also say it through uh, your home assistant device. Let me pull that up over here so that you can hear it on the speaker, maybe, or microphone. Okay, Jarvis, what is the temperature in the media room? The temp in the media room is 72 and the humidity is 49.52%. All right, there you go. So you, if you're using some sort of home assistant uh, voice assist, then you are able to... Um, Go in there and have it, you can create a custom sentence or sentences, and then you can have it respond back with a specific thing. So if you said, tell me the temperature in the house, for example, which is the uh, um, example they use on their blog, you can set it to send all of the temperature information back to you uh, for all the sensors in your house using this templating method. So very nice. Uh, it saves you from having to do the custom sentences in YAML, which I actually showed in a different video. So that negates that video entirely. So you can do all of it directly in the UI. Super nice, super nice. All right, what else? Um, all known assist devices is something else that you can show. So if I go to assist here, voice assistance, one of the things that will also show you is how many assist devices you have available or that home assistant knows about. I've got the cloud. Uh, I've got the, uh, I'm not sure what those two are interesting anyway you have these are voice assists that home assistant is aware of and then my m5 adam echo which is the thing i just talked to you or just demonstrated to you on there so you can see a quick um overview of all of the devices that home assistant knows about in your voice assistant stuff all right um some other stuff here let me just kind of scroll through i don't have examples for this but i'll show you here on their blog updating the zigbee devices uh, if you have ZHA and there's an, uh, an update for a specific Zigbee device, it should tell you in the repair center that you have an update available for that. Um, and one thing to note here is these, um, these weird versioning numbers. That's how it works in the Zigbee world. Uh, and Home Assistant hasn't figured out a way to translate them to something more humanly readable. So that's just what you're going to get. I don't even know. It looks like... Four seven is bigger than four six, so you want to have four seven. Yeah, it's still a it's still a incremented number, just not very human readable. So the things that are currently supported are iNovelli, OS RAM, Sonoff, and third reality devices. They're adding support for more brands in the future. Zigbee is a slow protocol, and firmware updates can take a long time, sometimes hours. Wow! So if you're going to update your Zigbee device over the network. Just uh, start it up and go watch a movie because that's what's going to happen. All right, so let's get back over to my next thing here, which is, uh, if I can find it. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. There we go. All right, so uh, there are some improvements in the Matter Diagnostics and Actions. And in this case, I have one Matter device, which is a little TP-Link uh, smart plug or mini smart plug. So what they're showing now is you're able to see things like your um, your networking stuff. So I can tell you what network I'm on, the node ID, what kind of network it is, what type of device it is, its MAC address, its IP address, both IPv4 and IPv6, and then the network name it's on. In addition to that, you can do things like manage the fabrics, re-interview the device, ping it, and download diagnostics. So there's just some additional stuff added here if you're playing with Matter for you to help or to help you understand how your Matter stuff is working. All right, some uh, other stuff here. Icon updates have been uh, done. Uh, you won't notice anything really except that everything, let's see, it's just basically under the hood kind of work here. There are some improvements they say here. So integrations can now provide icons for things like fan speeds or thermostat presets. I play with that for a minute. I have um, a bunch of fans and I tried to make it just change and tell me the preset uh, fan speed, but I it didn't do anything different. You can see that service calls have their own actions as well. And I guess this is a an example of some of that as well. And then areas have their own icons. So you can actually go on there and you can set up 
some areas here. Uh, if I go to areas, you can set some icons. I did it for this one. Let's, let's go here. You click on that, add a picture, and then your icon can be washing machine or whatever you want to call it. Washing machine. There you go. Save it. And then back here you have a, an icon for a washing machine. And then I have a palm tree for outside. So those are updated for the areas as well. One other thing too, and I don't have any examples of this because I don't have any issues currently, but integrations with authentication issues are now shown in the repairs dashboard. So if you are used to having to go to the integration page to figure out that something isn't authenticating properly, well, now you'll see it in the, uh, the repair dashboard. I think this is kind of huge um, because some integration might stop working and you may not know about it. You would have to go to the integrations page and figure it out or now it will just tell you in the uh, the repair center, along with all your other repair stuff, hey, you got a problem with one of your um, your authentications, go fix it. So that's that's a huge thing. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to, to uh, look at your whole system in one place than the repair center and understand if you have any issues that you need to deal with. So very nice. Uh, this one's a big one, the proximity integration. It's been completely revamped. If you're not using it, Proximity allows you to monitor the proximity of a person or persons to a particular zone. Zones are things like your home, work, school, whatever you set up zones for in Home Assistant. It provides information on how close one is to a zone and if they're traveling towards or away from it. And they're saying here, this is an extremely powerful tool for automations. It allows you to create automations based on the proximity of people. So example, if you're within a certain range from your home and traveling towards it, you can start turning on lights, opening the garage door, turn on the heating, all that stuff. And it also uh, is able to be set up via the UI. Not only that, it uses normal sensor entities that we all really are already familiar with. So you can make automating and displaying data a breeze. And here's an example. They show direction of travel, uh, distance from whatever and all that stuff. So on mine, I actually have uh, my phone on here and it shows direction of travel arrived. So I've I've arrived. It shows the distance to the zone is zero feet. So I'm in the zone. And it also says I'm the nearest device. Uh, nearest direction is still arrived and nearest st distance. If you were moving to or away from that, um, you would see it show here uh, direction of travels towards. In this case, you would take and make an automation off of that. And it would show, or the automation would say, well, if I'm within so many feet of whatever, then I can do something with that. So I can come over here and I can add an automation for this, like home nearest distance changes, um, me distance changes, only do something if this, right? So do something, these things are create automation. Here's the trigger. So that would say, uh, if my distance is above or below a certain distance from that, then I would do some sort of trigger for it. So you can automate through this proximity stuff and it's really nice uh, that it can be done through the UI and you can start doing a lot of automations against that. Um, so that's that uh, for automation or for proximity. That that deserves its own video. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but you can do a lot of things with that, especially now that it has all those sensors available to it. Other changes, um, there are new uh, improvements on handling errors in the form fields. So you don't show all the technical coding. Um, you see more human readable stuff. Uh, what else? Anything else specifically in here? The TP-Link smart home now supports newer devices, including Tapo branded devices. Um, what else? This is kind of interesting. The Google generative AI conversation allows the new Gemini models, including support for vision. So you could do something here and you could say very briefly, describe what you see in this image from my doorbell camera. Your message needs to be short to fit on a phone. Uh, don't describe stationary objects or buildings. And then we get something like delivery person with packages at the front door. Uh, very interesting use of that. So we'll see how that plays out. I think Gemini is a paid service. I'm not exactly sure. If we look at the details here. Uh, it's a conversation agent. Um, can be used in automations, but not as a sentence trigger. It can only query. You get a key and you probably have to pay Google for that certain usage or whatever. I don't know. So there you go. All right. Um, what else? New integrations. We've got a bunch of new stuff here. 
I won't go through all of those. Nothing really just jumps out at me as super awesome. And then actually city of Austin, that would be great. I need my city to do this so I can use O power and then Tapo by TP link. We start, we talked about backward incompatible changes, authentication. This is a good one to know about the refresh tokens will automatically delete, be deleted when they're unused. So that means, uh, if you haven't used it for 90 days, you will be logged out. If that's the case, you log in again, long lived access tokens. If you use those, if you need a permanent thing. So just keep that in mind. Um, what else, anything else fun here? MQTT, the sensor or binary sensor with an entity category set to config will fail to set up maintainers should set the entity category to diagnostic. If you need to do that, we talked about proximity. The proximity entity is deprecated. It will be removed in 2024.8. It's superseded by the new sensor entities. Um, sensors. Don't worry about that one. TP-Link Smart Home to prevent overloading of power strips. The energy data is now pulled every 60 seconds. If you need to pull it faster, use an automation that calls Home Assistant Update Entity Service. And Z-Wave. Oh yeah, the default rounding of numeric sensors to two decimal places has been removed. I saw that this morning on one of my dashboards and I have a jumble of numbers I have to figure out. We now let the device and driver decide what precision should be reported. This allows devices with greater precision to report accurately. You can change this in the UI or use a template sensor. Uh, and then it also sets the suggested precision to zero decimals for voltage center sensors with a native unit in V. It just, it makes it uniform for the display precision where otherwise seems to be a variety of precision reported from different devices. You can still change the precision in the UI or template sensor. And then the fan and dry climate preset modes have been removed after a period of deprecation. If you haven't, you need to update your automations to use a corresponding dry and fan HVAC modes instead. All right. That was a lot of Z-Wave stuff. Okay. Well, that's going to be it. Um, for this video, just a quick overview of 2022. Dot, no, 2024.2. Uh, up, upgrade and uh, enjoy all the new features, and we'll see you on the next video.